then to shape four. Back to shape one. Back to house of blues. So that got me across the entire fretboard without having to make big jumps. It was very gradual. Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video we're going to go over my top five tips for lead guitar playing, and I'm going to give you an example for each tip. Before we get into the lesson, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks, and if you want to be notified of each new video, be sure to tap the bell. So the first tip is to find riffs that you love and make them your own. This is how you develop your own vocabulary. So every guitar player that we know and love had a favorite guitar player or a favorite bunch of guitar players where they took riffs from, learned that vocabulary, and then made it their own. So I'm gonna put on a backing track from guitartricks.com. It's kind of got a jam band, southern rock kind of feel. It's in the key of G. And I'm gonna show you a riff that we're gonna pretend is the riff that we really love, and then we're gonna make it our own. So check it out. All right, so here's the hypothetical riff. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. Really nice, right? First thing I'm gonna do is see if I can play it in other places. So that was shape four of the pentatonic into shape five. I can play it like this. So that's step number one. The second step is to workshop the idea, change a little bit of the rhythm, change one or two notes. So here's some variations. I just ended it differently, some more variations. So I'm using it just kind of as a motif. Double the speed. Still works. So that's how you build your own vocabulary and you take things you learn and make them your own. So the second tip is to think of your solo like a conversation. What does a conversation have? It's got a main point, You're trying to make a point. You're inquiring, there's sentences, there's questions, there's exchange back and forth. So you could think of it like you're having a conversation with the audience or the listener. You want them to hear what you said before just blabbing on and on and on. And you're also having conversation with yourself, right? Or the other musicians in the band. So thinking of it conversationally. So questions, answers, statements, sentences, main ideas. So here's an example of what would be conversational playing versus just blabbing on and on. Opening statement. I like that idea. I want to know more about it. Space. You know, one sentence, next sentence, and there's kind of a main idea. I'm building each sentence off the other. It's not like, I went ice skating. Lunch was good yesterday. <laughs> you know, it's like, I went ice skating and I had a great time because I spent time with my friends skating on the ice, as opposed to, I like lamps. Dogs are great animals. My camera's a Panasonic Lumix, <laughs> you know? You want it to be related. And this would be run on. You know, I, 
I started to get really bored. It sounded kind of good for a minute, but then it's like, all right, on and on and on. I don't, I can't process what's happening. Question. Answer. Follow up question. Next answer. All right, my next tip is to really work on your articulations, the things that make your guitar playing sound more vocal, like a singer, because that's the beauty of the guitar, is that we can bend strings, we can slide on strings, we can add vibrato. It's a much more vocal instrument than, say, the piano, for instance, where the, the piano just has a hammer, hit the string, and that's it. We, with our fingers, can do all sorts of things. So here's some of the articulations. You just want to, you can, jam over a jam track and just really focus on one articulation at a time as a way to practice it. So check it out. So first, just slides. Just try to make solos using slides. This is a great practice technique. Sliding with my first finger. Try with your third finger. And your first finger. Slide backwards, slide forwards, hammer-ons. You can run scales with hammer-ons really fast. Mixing hammer-ons and pull-ups. Vibrato. Long, dramatic. Vibrato hold. Quiet and loud. Right, just playing with that volume. Bends. And this is something you really want to work on to get that accuracy. Play the next note up. And then see if you can bend to it. step bends like from here to here and then whole step bends like from here to here Next tip is to just relax. So relaxing is great because it allows you to play with less effort. Less effort you use, the more endurance you're going to have in your playing and the easier it's going to be, right? If you're really tense, it's going to be slow, it's going to get hard, you're going to get fatigued. The other thing is it's going to let you have really good dynamics where you could play soft 
And then when you want to get louder and add a little more tension, you can. So one great way to do that is to just play things as quietly and calmly as possible. Just really visualize the muscles in your wrists and your fingers as like almost asleep, right? It doesn't mean slow down necessarily. It just means play really relaxed and soft. So if we were just playing that G major scale, Just try to play a solo as relaxed as possible. And then you can get a little harder. Now you have all that dynamic range. As opposed to just la 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 Instead you're doing much more interesting. And then my last tip has to do with the best way to get across the entire fretboard in any key as a beginner, and even for me, my main foundation are two and a half shapes of the vertical patterns, right? So there's five vertical patterns, and for me, the bread and butter are two and a half of those. And that means pattern one. So in this instance in G, we have it over here. We also have it over here. G major. And then if it was diatonic, meaning the full seven note scale, the pentatonic scale comes from that seven note scale. We just take out a couple notes. What's great about that one is it has a root note on the low E string. So in the case of G, the pinky is our root. That also doubles as the E minor pentatonic scale if we think of our first finger as the root. Same as diatonic. It would be G minor scale, it would be the E minor scale or the G major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's major and then minor. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And then the other one is shape four, which has the A string root notes. So that would be in this case here. said diatonic and pentatonic now I said two and a half so there's a little box extension outside of shape one that looks like this sometimes referred to as the Albert King box. I like to call it the House of Blues because it looks like a house. And it's easy to get into and, and it just sounds so good. And then from this shape one. So hypothetically, let's say we were soloing over that track and we knew it was key of G. We can start down here, shape one. me across the entire fretboard without having to make big jumps. It was very gradual. One more time on that.
it's just a way to visualize these main foundational patterns and then go in and out of them from there. So I recommend you focus on those. And you'll find different instructors and websites and stuff give the patterns a different number or name. Some think of it as the cage system. It's still the five vertical patterns, but think the one that has the E string root and the one that has the A string root. Those are the ones that are the most popular, most useful, and can act as your foundation. All right, everybody, I hope these five tips were helpful for you. If you wanna access the entire library of hundreds of jam tracks, head over to guitartricks.com. If you wanna see more lessons like this, please subscribe. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson.